Okay, guys, so this is how we're going to do the HVAC heating control. So we've got our LOX1 panel here, and we've got an RCBO, and then we've got relays on the mini server. Um, don't pay too much attention to this RC RCBO and power distribution. It's just sort of there as a as a guide that will probably change um, later on. But, yeah, just use it as a sort of reference. So we've got a supply going from the RCBO to the boiler and also supplying all of these commons of the relays in the mini server. So that's the first thing. Then the control for the hot wall, sorry, the control for the central heating is from this relay. The control for the domestic hot water is this relay in terms of the boiler. Now we might, it's not clear on the tech manual, but we might be able to just use one of those run signals or enable signals. Um, but I won't fully know that until the system's up and running. So maybe one of you guys knows. If you do, let me know. Um, so yeah, if we want uh, central heating, we'd then close that relay on the mini server and then it would close that. Um, that would be the, the switch live to the boiler for central heating same thing applies for the domestic hot water that's the switch live for the domestic hot water um then we move on to the wiring for the two port valves on the manifolds and their associated pump so this i think there's four isn't there four of these or three of these three of these sorry so there's three of these so there'd obviously be more relays but there's no point in repeating it so we've got, um, as soon as we want, as soon as the signal comes in from other locks on or from locks on thermostats, uh, and we want to bring on the heat in that zone, then the mini server will close its relay. It will send it down here and then it will spur off in two points. First one, just feeding the common of this auxiliary switch within this two port, uh, two port valve. And then the other will just supply the motor. I haven't done any neutrals on this drawing. Um, I don't, ho hopefully you won't need them. Um, and you know, when you're different, um, RCBOs, different neutrals, we've got to be careful there. So again, we'd, we're only focusing just sort of on the, um, the mains as a kind of reference, really. So it's not perfect, but it should give you a good idea of, you know, the control side of it. So yeah, we got it spurring off in two different positions. Now it's powering the motor, so that's opening the valve. And then when the valve completely opens, it then closes this auxiliary switch, which allows that supply to then feed into the pump. And again, I haven't drawn the neutral, but then that pump will only run when that valve is fully open. Um, we'd also be switching on the boiler as well at the same time um, when there's a call for heat at one of these manifolds. So moving on to the domestic hot water valve. So when there's a demand for domestic hot water, um, we could either switch them on at the boat, we could either switch them on both at the same time, or I think it's better, more efficient um, to just do it this way. So there's a demand for hot water. We close that uh that relay it comes down here it goes it's interlocked through sorry it's interlocked with the domestic hot water tanks thermostat um so providing that's sort of under the temperature it will close and then it will it will then open this valve which will allow heat to then go to the domestic hot water tank that motor will obviously start powering up and then opening and then here we got a signal feeding back to LOX1, um, a digital input that will tell us, right, when that valve's completely open, we can then, then we can switch on the boiler. Um, and then it's pretty much the same thing with the, um, with the tower rails. It's just, yeah, there's a demand for the tower rails, switches on the motor. Once that's fully open, we can then switch on the boiler. Um, again, we might be able to just switch the boiler on at the same time, but it's just nice to have that feedback. Hope that makes sense. Any questions, give me a shout.